Right, good evening, good evening everybody. If we could um, now start uh, tonight's consultation uh, on the Lindale School. Uh, first of all, can I introduce myself? My name is Phil Ward and I'm the um, uh, strategic lead for SEN World. I um, just want to wa welcome you all here today. It's very nice uh, to see lots of new faces and to see a very nice turnout and lead. Just a few house things just to mention before we commence the evening. Um, there is no fire alarm, I, am, I suspect, uh, for this evening, fire practice rather for this evening. So if a fire alarm does go off, the, obviously the exit is through that one where you just came in. There are um, ladies' toilets and men's toilets to the left and to the right, just through those double doors uh, there. Um, let me then introduce my colleagues. Um, Julia Hassel is the uh, Director for uh, Children's Services and um, Andrew Roberts and David Armstrong here are senior officers um, covering um, uh, resources and finance and capital and so forth. And can I just introduce Sue March? Sue is our signer for this evening. Now can I ask, is there anyone uh, in the room that does require the uh, services of a signer? Well, Within about half an hour, if we, if there is no need to uh, keep Sue, who will um, go in that case? Welcome, welcome. Now, Councillor Tony Smith, who's there, I <laughs> can see, obviously hasn't uh, arrived yet, but we will start um, uh, ahead of Tony. So that's Councillor Smith. And um, Councillor Smith is the cabinet member for Children and Family Services. So you'll see um, Tony joining us. Many of you, of course, uh, know Tony well. So I'm going to kickstart the evening and um, um, ask the uh, director, Julie Hassel, to um, explain the paper. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, very pleased to see so many people. Um, have to forgive me, some people who have been to all six meetings who are going to hear uh, the same introduction yet again. But I think it's really important that um, everybody, newcomers to these meetings, hear the introduction um, to the consultation about the Lindale School. And my introduction is drawn heavily from the consultation document. Um, so I want to welcome you to the consultation meeting. Um, I think, as, as people will know, the Lindale School is a special school uh, located in Easton and is a school for children with complex learning difficulties and takes children from the Holy Will. The reason why we're consulting about the future of the school is that the viability of the school is compromised because of the falling role uh, of a small number of children. Taken together with the national funding reform that creates a difficult position. There are currently 23 children attending the school, um, and the viability, by using the word viability, um, it means that their long term stability is uncertain, not just for the children currently attending the school, uh, but for future children who may want this provision. Um, and the viability gets more and more difficult. Um, as numbers have got smaller year on year. I do want to say, and I've said this at all meetings, that this consultation about the Lindale School is absolutely nothing to do with the standards of education and care at the school. Um, the last soft study inspection was November 2012, uh, which found that the school was good and in many aspects outstanding, so it was literally not to do with the centre of this consultation is the need to get the future provision right for the children. That is the, the very centre of our concern. With two other schools, uh, primary schools for children with complex learning difficulties in Wirral, that's Ellery Park School and Stanley School, who provide good schooling and care for the children. And they would, our view is they would be able to provide good quality education and care. Should I do want to say and to stress that the consultation is not linked to the council's need to save money and that any money that is saved will be fed back and invested in children and young people. As the local authority, we've got a, a duty to make sure.
ensure there are sufficient school places for children uh, in order to meet their needs and in order to make sure there's fair access. Just a couple of general comments that in Wirral we have a children and young people's plan and through that there's a commitment by all partners to provide the very best access for children and a deep commitment to make sure that we value children in the authority. There's a new uh, piece of legislation that was passed in April this year called the Children and Families Act. And the focus of that act, in part, is to improve partnership to meet children's needs. Um, and later this year, there'll be a new education, health and care plan that's introduced uh, for children. And this sets out how we will meet children's needs in a very joined-up way going forward. Um, it's really important to note and to state that the local authority is very committed to working closely with children and families throughout the process and that we really do appreciate this is a matter of great concern to the people involved. On the 16th of January, a report was taken to Cabinet um, that started this consultation and the report also contained a number of other options such as uh, restricting places at Ellery Park and Stanley School and thus diverting children to the Lindale School. Um, another option was whether the Lindale School should become a 2 to 19 school. A further option was federating the school uh, with another special school or mainstream school. We also set out how we considered co locating the Lindale School with another special school. There are options such as becoming a free school or an academy, both of which will be down to the Lindale governors uh, to pursue. And then the final couple of options were to close the Lindale school and make sure places were available for children in special bases in our other mainstream primary schools. Or the final option, which is the option that we took to cabinet as the primary option, um, was to close the Lindale school provide additional places at Ellery Park School and Stanley School. The Cabinet report said that during the consultation period, uh, all options and any new options would be considered in great detail. And I have to say there have been new options that have appeared during this process. Taking all the information into account, the Cabinet begin, agreed to begin the consultation um, the decision was called in, so elected members had a further look at the, the process and the decision making uh, to call in a uh, meeting on the 27th of February. And the committee considered all aspects and after very careful consideration recommended the consultation should start, but that we should be absolutely open and transparent in how we conducted the process and that we evidenced our own so, the consultation actually began on the 2nd of April and will run until the 25th of June. Um, so, we have had a series of consultation meetings. We had three in April um, and then we had three that have started in June. As I said, this is the last consultation. And during the process, we we'll have to consider issues such as viability and sustainability, quality and standards, diversity and patterns preference, pupil numbers, financial implications and value for money, travel, building and site, and implications for the staff. During the 12 weeks, we've agreed to make sure we've got a really up-to-date understanding of each of the children who attend the school, and meetings have now started taking place to make sure we do that. And we have, all the children have a statement of special educational needs. But we felt that sometimes the annual review perhaps isn't, uh, doesn't kind of revisit and give as much of an up to date picture of children as is needed in this process. So that's what we've set about to do, led by our uh, principal psychologists. We've also got to apply what's called an SEN improvement test so that any alternative that is proposed <coughs> is actually as good as or better than the current. And in order to apply that test, we felt we needed a very up-to-date understanding of each individual child to make sure that any future option would be good as or better for that individual child, not seeing the children 
preserves us as a whole and collectively. What we have done when we agreed to do this quite a, just before the process started, we've engaged an independent consultant um, to uh, offer advice on how we would look at each of the eight options and any new options that appear, and also to assess how we apply the SEN recruitment test. And the person we've recruited is someone called Lynn Bright, who was not known to any of us in Wirral uh, prior to engaging with her. And she will produce a, a separate report to Cabinet with her independent view. At the end of the 12 week period, we will um, go back to Cabinet and decide whether the option for closure should proceed uh, to, a, to a formal proposal or if another option should be uh, progressed. So Cabinet will, will independently view, take a view of the recommendations by officers. If, and I must stress if, the proposal is to close, and that is uh, approved by Cabinet, the next step would be a four-week statutory representation period uh, where further responses can be made. And if the formal um, approval, uh, formal proposal is finally approved then uh, by Cabinet, then the school will close at the end of the summer term 2015. Primary age children will transfer to continue their education from another school from September 2015. It's really important to stress again that absolutely no decision has been made at this point and that everybody's views are being taken into account. And we've had a lot of written views. Uh, Janice is sitting on the front row and has done all six consultation meetings, and Janice is taking notes of all the suggestions and comments and views expressed during the meeting. I think another thing I just want to mention in the document um, that we set out some of the challenges that smaller schools can face, um, where you can end up spending a higher proportion of the budget on staffing and fixed costs, such as caretakers uh, cleaning the building. Um, and potentially the school, if it's a very small school, could go into financial deficit and the local authority could amend the formula to give the money to a small school, but this would mean taking money from other schools. If the school has less money, it could have to consider making some staff redundant. Um, and with a smaller school, some staff could end up taking on um, additional responsibilities. And I think it just sets out how with a larger school that can, can give more flexibility for the budget and a higher proportion of the budget can be spent on, on teaching and meeting children's needs uh, with less spent on some of the fixed costs. Just a final couple of points I want to make before handing over to my colleague David Armstrong who will cover some of the financial issues uh, associated with uh, the Lindale scheme. I just want to talk a little bit about pupil numbers and places. Um, and in every January, we do a census of the number of children who are receiving schooling in Wirral. It's done in every local authority. So in January 2014, there were 49,079 children attending nursery classes in the schools. 401 children attending primary or secondary school, secondary school of children with complex learning difficulties. And within that 401 are 64 children with profound and multiple learning difficulties. It's important to say that the number of children with profound and multiple learning difficulties has been similar over the last four years. We've had about 58 to 61 children across all ages of school age with profound and multiple learning difficulties. So over that period, we're not seeing a growing trend in terms of numbers of children with the most profound disabilities. Just a little bit briefly about Ellery Park School. Um, it's a school that has 90 places for children with complex learning difficulties. And through discussion with the school and through some building work that's already planned to address issues of suitability and sustainability, we know that the
single to a new purpose-built school, which is like a horseshoe, and one half of the horseshoe is Pensby Primary School, and the other half is the new Stanley School. And the school has 90 places but can accommodate at least 110 children. Um, if there will be more, more children with complex learning difficulties in the future. And we do know that we can even at the squeeze but add up to five to ten more children uh, in that school without an extension. And I think, as we'll say, we, we, we have done some exploratory work and we do know that we can now extend that school should it be needed. So it's our view that taking together these changes will give sufficient places across the two schools to meet the needs of all existing and future projected children with complex learning difficulties. I think during the evening, we will talk also about some further discussions about buildings that have taken place uh, following the meeting I've had with the Chief Executive with three parent governments. That's quite a recent development. We've had one meeting and a further meeting is planned this Friday just to talk about could we expand this school or how we might, um, are there any other options? And also to feed back to parent governors about our work I'm going to say more at this point. I'm going to hand over to David, who, as I say, will say a little bit more about the financial issues. Okay, thank you. And apologies for those of you who have heard this five times before. It's the last time for you. I would just to set out the board to our students this morning and set out because of this information and the questions about. Um, I'm, also, I'm going to be responsible for the two budgets, and I'll come back to those. And I'm also responsible for the school assets and school buildings.
increasingly looking forward, we will have to see authorizations to carry on trying to do that from a national body of the education funding agency, which administers all this money nationally for the Department of Education. And therefore the future is less certain. Thank you. 
that's very well. Excuse me. I, I think the point I was just going to raise is that we'll make sure that the, the high-level notes, and I think it's a very helpful suggestion looking at grouping them for each meeting so you get a sense of the themes, are made public when we go to Cabinet with our report. So those, those notes will inform, in part, along with other things, the recommendations
So I can't speak for pediatricians, but surely the point is that... No, they have not. No is the answer to that. Uh, sorry, uh, what was your yes, your <coughs>
who may, for their own reason, decide to express a preference well, potentially anywhere. So there's no presumption automatically that if the school is to close, the children will go to A, B, and C. We've got to enter into that conversation.
Secondly, um, you mentioned the teaching um, in the other schools in the in one of your and Stanley. Um, that, as I understand it, is not going to work because we currently have a window. So if you see this basically is basically this toileting, uh, they will be left. Um, if the children go to the window, assuming this proposal went through, the children the window went to those other two schools, and if their current level of education is to be maintained, I would expect those children to have one to one level of support as they have now. Wouldn't that therefore affect the viability of those schools that we go to if they happen to be staffing?
by one to one attention. Okay. You know, well, if that means, if that means, 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 that not only to look at the progress the child is making, or otherwise, but to look at needs as well. Now, there's a lot yeah, more can questions. I, can what? I just add one other yes. bit? I think it's important to feed that in through the psychologist when the meetings are taking place as well. Does that mean, does that mean that the, the, the Horrified, really, that it wasn't in the report. And finally, the third thing is, and I 
would like to reflect what Dave said and what Dean said, Ian Lewis and Dave Mitchell. And that is, there was a unanimous view, uh, a, a decision by council. What happened was, in fact, arising out of a, 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 a petition organised by parents, the council, and with one of our parents, or then parents, who would address the council, there was uh, an agreement that there would be a, an investigation leading to a policy for children with PMLD in this borough. Uh, the first part of that investigation was done because they asked parents what they thought, and then there was going to be a part two. That part two has never been finished. And I feel that the reason we did that was to give a robust basis to actually talk about this, what we're talking about now, because we knew it was going to happen, and we've known for seven years it was going to happen, and we thought it's logical if you start with the needs of the children, identify what the needs of the children are, and then you work out how much it costs per child, and then you fund it. And as has been said, one way or another this has to be funded, even if it means cross subsidising in school. And I don't think, I think if we're going to cross subsidise, I think all the parents in school should be told that. Because obviously, if a child's got the sort of health problems that our children have got in the school, they have to have their children. And therefore, if, if there is a shortage of staff, they have to be paying for somewhere else because their lives are not threatened. So it's as easy as that. The issues are very simple. And I think they're being obscured by a lot of the discussions. But the fact of the matter is it costs money to educate children who are in this condition. And we, plus health, of course, and we haven't mentioned but health put a lot of money in from Lindale and the other schools, we need jointly to ensure that the lives of these children are the best that they can be. Thank you. Thank you very much.
in a different setting. Can you explore that? And so we've had one meeting so far, and we've got another meeting on Friday, to try and have a different kind of conversation about how we're exploring all the different options. Because I think the gentleman here uh, raised the point when we were at the Floral Pavilion. It feels like when you have these meetings sometimes, you can questions from the floor, and then we kind of almost it feels like defend the position. Whereas you can, with a smaller group, sometimes say, can we have a different kind of conversation? And we're doing that in tandem with these meetings to try and flush out all the different options and look at them in real detail. Okay, well, can I just say, in the kind of replication that may ask for it, then they even know in your in, 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 uh, for documents, it says many of the children have PR money yeah. in the place. The, the actual, it's the vast majority, it's almost all the children. So the reason why they fail so perfect for their needs is because it's a small homely school and it does feel like it does feel like a home for them because they, they are the normal
going to be an option because you need a lot of space for our children. Most of them are in wheelchairs. You know, you can't, you just, I, I just don't think that can be done. For a range without of compromise, Without compromise in the outdoor yeah. space, you're saying about the hydrotherapy pool, so again, our children that need to go have the hydrotherapy pool, if, if we said, right, well, they need four sessions a week, you're then going to be taking sessions away from children that are already at that school. You're going to be creating a bad atmosphere between the parents of Lindale children and the parents of Stanley children or Ellery Park. And also, you've had expressed concerns by a teacher at Stanley who also has PMLD children, and she has told you it's not going to work. You can't integrate our children. So are our children then going to be segregated? I don't keep asking this because my fear is that my child is going to be stuck in a very small space. But your children are integrated anyway, aren't they? No. Further on when they're moving to secondary. We don't, we're not happy about that. We're oh, right. we're well, about and you've made that very clear. Even at Foxfield, we've got the new Foxfield, yeah. from what I'm led to believe. Yeah. You've got your three separate areas. Yeah. You cannot mix children with behavioural issues. Let's just put a pick up some of those. Children yes. who have got no sense of danger, have yeah. got no ability to protect themselves. In relation, this is a comeback, okay. So, in relation to Ellery and Stanley, um, I think the head teachers of both schools have been very assertive in their belief and confidence that their schools can meet the needs of the children. Now, that would require further discussion with the families and the local authority to ensure that that actually happens. Uh, in relation to space related issues, the daily
terms of any extra building work and how that was designed, we want to as much as we could. I think somebody said it took the last for one meeting. We want to kind of co-produce and look at how we created the environment that was right. Well, thank you, Jess. Uh, there's another question to add. Just from here, and then back. This is a question for Director of Children's Services. Uh, you mentioned the, the intriguing the meeting that you must attend next Friday, which concerned new buildings, am I correct? Concerned buildings. Concerned buildings, right. Uh, and I've got the impression that you expect something to be out of the business of this meeting. It's a meeting, not one meeting, with the three panels.
is this. You're willing to pay thousands of pounds out to have buildings built onto these schools. Why don't you just keep Lindale School open? Where are you going to get the money from? Who's going to get it to you? To build this extension, it's going to run into thousands and thousands. So why don't they just use the money and keep the school open? Thank you. Well, that is a hypothetical question. 
but it's pretty much the same. Well, it's interesting. It's not the same. It's not Their parents told you their children would, if the very high chance of their children would do it. But the same question would arise too when primary PMLD youngsters move into a new school in the secondary phase. Absolutely. It's a much bigger environment, a much bigger mix of children. Yeah, but we've been telling you for eight years, but we've been telling you for eight years that the secondary schools are not suitable for our children, which is why we've been asking for 2019. But nevertheless, PMLD children yes. do move into the secondary Locked sector. Locked away, they're going to be locked Right. One of the things that you you said to us very clearly is, and, and this is what the MP said as well, can you look at recreating the Lindell ethos? Is there a way of the group of children, which may be about 15 in number, can move together as a group and, and be cared for and taught as a group? Which is, is, we are taking that seriously and looking at whether that is something that can be happening. That's something that's come back as one of the So for the whole 20-odd children, you just said 15, I think by next September. Well, it's who has that job in September, yeah. When are we getting this from? There's only like three leaving and there's another two, three coming in. Is there four coming in? So I don't understand where you're getting this 15 from. Okay, that might be wrong. Right, okay. Three classrooms, it's not three classrooms. They need a board, they need a change of facilities, they need outside space. Remember that it is still a presumption about the so-called group of youngsters moving from one place to another when it comes to individual consultation with parents, which we must do. Some parents may, for their own reasons, take different decisions. The back. Yeah, I'd just like to ask you, Because it's not a 
set piece. My piece at the beginning, and what David says at the beginning, is a set piece. The conversation. The dates haven't changed, even though your criteria are the dates are still the same as the words of the first week of the last podcast. Like, when, when the conversation yeah. process is finished, we talk about the term of 2015 and these various variations to the plans mean that the consultation process is not a viable one because you can't guarantee that. Right. Any what, what we're finding and what needs to happen is the 12 week consultation process we're in at the moment is flushing out different options, different views, and what we're working like really with is to try and look at each of these options. Right, thanks, Jeff. Two questions over here and then Jeff's been here in the front. Yes, it's uh, on the radio. Yes, it's on the saying before about uh, parental choice. Uh, I know that uh, any... Can I, can I just raise a, a, an issue about process? The way you, you respond to, to some parents is dismissive and offensive in the extreme. <laughs> when a parent expresses concern that their child is vulnerable because he's in a wheelchair, and maybe attacked by a child who's got behavioural problems. To be told that's a hypothetical question, I find that deeply offensive. I really, really do. Well, don't really make sure that's right. I want to make sure that... Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that point is done. I take, I take that point. What was the reason for that? Just... <laughs>
halfway through my question, so I'll go back to the start. Uh, any, any decision that a local authority like World Council makes has to be uh, compatible with the Human Rights Act, and one of those human rights is a right to education. Now, I know the wording of that, uh, it has about uh, parents can choose a school on religious grounds and also philosophical grounds. Now, all the parents who have children at Lindale have ch specifically chosen Lindale, and if the school is closed, well, you've taken that choice away from them. The other point I was trying to make is that earlier on, parents were saying that the, the schools that you want to move the children to, if Lindale does close, that they're not happy with. So how do you square that uh, legal commitment to make a decision that's compatible with human rights with what you propose about closing the school? Possibly on the 
Yes, I do. I'm going to need to refer to cabinet members. And um, remember, why don't you refer to cabinet Well, that was again discussion we had earlier. But still, what it will be like to be, I think, Julia, after the cabinet submarine. Further opportunity. To look at some of the issues that you've given us. Oh, it's totally exclusive. Yeah, and now we're going to amend the draft. Yeah. The original plan was to take a report to Cabinet before the speech was on holiday. To do that, it would have to be something like the 17th of July. I've had a brief conversation with, with the pair of governors when we had the meeting a week last Friday about <coughs> could we, should we move the date of the Cabinet very beginning of September. My, my fear is if we, we rush it at the end of the consultation, because you have to publish a report a week before the cabinet, that I'm not asking about your report. I'm asking about the minutes of the individual. So you're still and you're repeating the same. You're you both going to repeat the same point five or six times. And that's the time we like that when you're saying if we can't back in information before coming there. We might have had this experience, we might have been able to advance the process. <laughs> what I am saying, well, from, well, no, what I am saying, what I am saying, from the point of my experience within the industry, within the decision making in the school, within the, within the decision making in social services with regards to people with specific learning needs or mental health needs, which is my background, what I am saying from, I've got the strong suspicion. You've made the decision that you want that you want to close the school and you are using these consultation periods to feed that vague result, vague access to us. They just feel like we have a say because you've got the right all the information for our <laughs>
of this hanging over the summer period uh, before a decision is made, a preliminary decision by cabinet. Um, we talked to the leader of the council, we talked to the parent, parents, um, parents of children in principle about whether we have a longer period over the summer where we were working through all the material, all the feedback that we've got through these consultations. I think in answer to your question, I'm sorry, I'm doing a diverse about that. We've, we've gone in, like, it's not been a, 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 a story where you start at one point and you move it along each separate meeting. We've approached it and we'll reflect on if this is the best way. It's the first time we've ever had so many meetings. We've approached and in all good faith, to be really honest, it has been about providing as many opportunities to say, this is, what the, this is our starting point, this is the consultation document. Give us your views. And where things have developed a bit, we've fed that back at these meetings. What we now think, because there's, a con there's twice as many people at this meeting as there have been at previous meetings, and as the consultation is nearing, which is good, at nearing conclusion, it flushes out more options and, and fine tunes some of the thinking. So I think we need that bit longer and to go to an extraordinary and special cabinet at the beginning of September. We will still make a final decision by Christmas, but it, it gives just that bit longer to think through and work through the options that we gave assurance to cabinet that we would. Right, thank you, Julia. We'll just take one, it's now half past seven, and the consultation will close after this question. Thank you.